I'm Kerry Fink with Helping Seniors Update. Welcome. We're in the middle of the week now. It's Wednesday and it's the 23rd and what a great surprise and honor. This is Joe Steckler, our president and founder of Helping Seniors who's with us today. And Joe, this is your first time actually back on, uh, on any kind of the real media. I know you've been writing the articles, but you're actually back live and in person from knee surgery. How are you today? Well, I'm fine, Kerry. I, it's just that you hear so many things that people say about knee operations or replacement of any joint on a body. body. And I, you know, I, I'm beginning to think since I've had a hip replacement, now a knee replacement, I got another knee replacement to go through. I've had things taken out of me. I had things put in me. I don't care what it is. It all hurts. <laughs> and oh my no matter what they tell you, it hurts. But almost every time you begin to see a light at the end of the tunnel, and that's the same thing that I equate to uh, fundraising and trying to help people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we try to help people and we do the very best we can. And so one of the things that I've always heard people comment on about a nonprofit organization, well, I'm not gonna give you my money because you're just gonna throw it away or you're gonna give it to somebody that doesn't deserve or doesn't need it. Well, I'd just like to quickly tell people that if you contribute to helping seniors abroad, that your money goes to help us man a helpline that does do everything we can to ensure that the people get the right kind of help that they need, but moreover, that the people that call us are truly deserving of help. You know, we have people, and so many, and I'm sure almost everybody that's listening to us today will know exactly what I mean when I say using the system. So many people use the system to try to get an improvement in their lifestyle when no matter what we try to do to help them, they're not going to be satisfied. Right. And, and I've seen that, and now I've seen it in people that I try to mentor and people that I try to help them understand what this process really is about. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's a, a learning curve. and. Uh, people that get involved in uh, nonprofit work, they quickly, not always quickly, but most of them learn that, you know, you've got to do everything you can to convince your donors that their money is wisely spent. And I, on that, well, you go ahead. Well, I was just going to, I was going to echo that. We, uh, earlier today, we were on the Helping Seniors radio show and uh, uh, Jennifer Helen with Seniors Helping Seniors was there and Sharice Durham from Hibiscus Court was there. And these were actually two topics that were actually very front of mind because we were really talking a lot about the Helping Seniors car raffle and the importance of what we do with the Senior Information Helpline. And both of them, you know, Jennifer, as you know, as board member has been uh, with, with the organization almost since when you began with it. And, um, Sharice over at uh, Hibiscus Court is very much a fan of, of everything because she's, you know, they were both talking about the fact that with so many seniors in our area, it's so important that people have a resource and that this is totally different than a referral line, that we actually get involved and, and it, it could take Kim, and I've seen you work with cases where it takes many calls before we're able to get to the right person to resolve something. But a point that you're making too is the fact that the person really wants to, um, wants to be helped. And occasionally you'll run into a case where um, despite the best efforts, you know, uh, it's, the, it's that old expression, you can lead the horse to water, but if it doesn't want to take a drink, you know, we've taken it as far as we can. But since this organization is going into its 10th year, you know, Joe, uh, we've helped uh, something like 3,400 families uh, absolutely free of charge. And I'm always amazed at how much good helping seniors is able to do for the vast majority of people who call in and have a need. I think you, 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 you say a number 400. I said 3,400. 
30 and, well, yeah the three didn't come out and <laughs> i know that i know that we've helped more than 400 yes but, you know we decided we've we've been doing this car raffle now it's the fourth year but we also have what we call an annual fund drive and we just have a couple of things we try to do to encourage people to help us mm -hmm. and uh a lot of our donors are repeat donors. They're people that, that know us, know what we do. And, uh, but sometimes uh, you do what you've done this time and increased our social media outreach. And uh, what's really pleased me, Carrie, is that I know, and I'm trying to figure out how to check it, but I know a lot of people have bought tickets on the car, made a donation to help us, and I'm convinced that while, yes, they've got a chance to win a car, they see what we do when they go to our website and find out about uh, some of the stuff we do, and they, they might go on there and trigger a point, and maybe they needed some help, but they didn't know what to do. And he took a look at it and he said, okay, hey, it's not as difficult as I thought it would be if I go to the right information source. So. You know, that's what we tried to do. We have, over the years, we've tried to eliminate all the stuff that's uh, uh, a side issue that, that, that really hides the problem. And we've tried to, uh, we've tried to see what the problem really is and, and then give people an, an, a good, a verifiable answer. And, you know, we can't solve all the problems. And a lot of it has to be the people that, or will want the help. They have to they have to be willing to, to 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 accept a solution that maybe is ninety nine percent of what they want, but they can't get the other quite one percent. Right, right. You know? Well, and that was one of the things that Jennifer actually was talking about on the radio today. Is she said, you know, she said when you first started the Helping Seniors Organization, she was referring to the fact that at one time our county had a senior information helpline and she said she understood that uh, when everything kind of went uh, belly wampers in 2008 or whenever that downturn happened uh, that that line uh, you know it moved over to Orlando and what they were both talking about on the radio today was how valuable helping seniors was because it is a local to Brevard organization and so because of the network uh, that you and Kim and 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 everybody connected to helping seniors has, there's an ability well, yeah, to find yeah. local resources that really right. And and you 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 hit a key issue there, Carrie. There are three thousand sixty seven counties in the United States of America, mm -hmm. and when you think about that, Brevard County right now is somewhere around the tenth oldest county in terms of seniors over the age of 65. Wow. And so when people read that statistic and they say, gee, that, that's, pretty, uh, that's a pretty concentrated number. And when you think about it, Broward County right now, I think we've got something uh, close to 500 or more, well, more than 500,000 people in the county now. So, and you know, when we, Florida being the... Uh, second oldest county or state in the United States, the number of people who are age of 65, you know, picking out counties uh, that are like ours that are 70 miles long and approximately 20 miles wide, that's a lot of territory to cover. And you're going, I, one of the things I've noticed in the work I've done here since 1993, is that in trying to reach out to people that the north of our county is as different from the south of the country county as night and day sometimes. Size and accessibility to resources is extremely important and uh, we try to, uh, to help people. A good point it was that uh, it's sad because most states have funds set up to um, to help build housing for the affordable housing so that we don't have homeless people. Um, but we've got to do a better job of, of informing people and having having systems that 
like ours. Mm -hmm. uh, helping seniors is, we're an honest organization. We, you know, I don't take any money. Uh, you don't take much money. Uh, and of course, you can't even get it from me right now. But it's, uh, it's a ministry. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, years ago, I, I, my wife and I attended the uh, Catholic Church's uh, lay pastoral uh, ministry program, and we were commissioned after three years of study mm -hmm. as uh, ministers to, to the elderly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's an important calling, and uh, it means something to me. And it, uh, I, you have to be committed. It's just so many people cannot do what you and I do, but they can commit to helping financially. Mm -hmm. um, all you people that are watching this uh, this little uh, broadcast right now, um, I had a knee replacement. And when I went into the hospital, my wife dropped me off at the front door of the hospital. When I went through that door, I was in and she was out. Mm -hmm. I, I could only talk to her on the telephone. Mm -hmm. And it, it really, really concerns me when we say, that you're in a nursing home and you can't see your loved one. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really tough on that person is there knowing that they can't get a visit, they can't get a hug, they can't have somebody touch them with their hand that they know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard. I've dealt with that for uh, almost 30 years in the nonprofit world and, and working with people, Alzheimer's victims and everything else. So what's really important, the message that I want to get across to people watching us today is that every dime that you donate is a ticket purchase, a donation to this organization. It's used for a good cause. And I give you my word that if you ask me a question about where we go with the money, what we do with it, I would be happy to share anything financially about our organization with anybody that calls. We work hard for that money. And so once we work hard for it, we sure don't want to waste it. We want it to help people. And and you, you've seen that carry by with some of the things you're doing now with, uh, you know, we, we have fun doing a lot of this stuff. A lot of it, it's not all, it's not all uh, a, a thing that you want to hide from people, but um, uh, tell me about what you're doing today with, with, uh, with the cars and, and, and because it, I, I wish I could have been there. Oh, it was, it was great fun, Joe. So uh, as you know, uh, we have really been blessed with having the help of some really good folks in this town. I know, uh, AJ Hires has always worked with you. Uh, we were talking about that today, even going back into uh, the Alzheimer's days. And there's a great piece that uh, uh, that AJ recorded himself talking about how important the work that you have done over the years, not only uh, what you're doing currently on the helping senior side, but even setting up the Joe's clubs and all of that, uh, that still uh, are serving people this day. And th that he's always... Uh, talked about the importance of uh, the work that goes on for seniors in Brevard. And then also when you look at Mark Pylock and, and he, ever since the museum has opened up, he's opened the doors to helping seniors to help us along in the car raffle. And today was no exception. Uh, we were trying to think of because we're in COVID world and we can't actually take cars really to car shows because that just hasn't opened up yet. And yet we still have the financial need to make sure that I think I'm going to interrupt you just a second, Carrie, because you know you met, you mentioned a name, and you and I both know what this man does and what he what he what he what he's willing to share. But the guy is uh, Mark Pylock, and he he made his uh, money by selling the um, a, an, a, an ingredient that you put in uh, animal food uh, food that it has. It flavors it so that, that animals like to eat that <laughs> stuff that, he's, that they make. But he has taken that money for the most part from those, and he buys these cars that are really museum type cars. And he has probably, I guess, he has the largest collection of, of, of vintage muscle cars in the United States or maybe the world, one of the top collections, certainly at least it ranks at the top. 
but uh, everybody's got how many cars do you have out there? Two they, told, they told us it was, I think, uh, if I'm not misquoting Ed, I think he told me it was 338. So he's got almost a car for every day of the year. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But he's yeah. he's taken these cars, and I remember the first day that uh, uh, another board member and I met Mark. Uh, we, we met him shortly after he moved here, and he had an office over uh, here in a part of Melbourne. And uh, Ed Fleece and I went over and paid a call on him, and we were one of the first to met the man. He was very gracious and very kind to us, and he had all of his cars just parked in warehouses. Mm -hmm. And he was showing us his cars in these warehouses. And even though it was it was a disaster and how he had to stack these cars in there, right. you could see that the man was still proud of him. And can you imagine 330 cars uh, uh, all connected, all running, none of them leaking oil? No. Uh, you know, and then he builds this huge mu museum that he can actually hold all these cars. And, and and line them up and, and, and show people mm -hmm. what they are, tell people what they are. But in addition to that, he has a, a vintage collection of Schwinn bicycles. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you can remember back in the days when gasoline was 18 cents a gallon, and we, we had these pumps that you, you, you cranked with a hand crank and uh, to pump your gas. He's got some of those things out there. He's got almost everything in that museum that dates back to showcase the uh, the, uh, the production of uh, of, of cars uh, from uh, uh, around the United States. So he's very generous and he has done an awful lot to help us. Yes, and he opened up his uh, test track for us today because today we were out there uh, with the Dodge versus Chevy challenge. And as you know, Joe, in the Helping Seniors car raffle this year, there are four cars that the winner gets to choose from. Um, there is that uh, beautiful Mazda uh, Miata convertible. There is the very practical and stylish Kia Sportage, but the two that seem to be getting really a lot of the attention, just like, like last year, that Dodge Challenger is a favorite. But now that AJ has that Chevrolet dealership, the Chevrolet Camaro is also a top contender as well. So we invited some of the friends out uh, of helping seniors to come out and actually sort of talk up uh, their experiences driving the car. And so Saturday morning, this Saturday morning at 1030 on our Helping Seniors Facebook page and also on our YouTube page, we are going to let you have a chance to see that Dodge versus Chevy challenge. And it was a lot of fun today with, uh, with everything. And just again, Mark being willing to not only open up the museum to help us uh, during this time and let us have our grand uh, drawing there on October 10th. You know, we're really about two and a half weeks out now from that grand drawing and Mark has kindly opened up the museum to make that available uh, so that we're gonna be broadcasting Facebook Live and YouTube Live for there. We can't because of the COVID precautions, uh, we can't have the general public visit us that day. But Joe, as you know, Mark generously offered, he said, the minute the uh, COVID restrictions are open, I will set up uh, three different, up to three different dates that I will be happy to welcome people with Helping Seniors car raffle tickets to come by and look at the museum. And I'll even buy the soda and pizza those days. And so uh, when you buy your Helping Seniors car raffle ticket, one for 25 or five for a $100 donation, you're keeping the work of Helping Seniors going forward. You might win a beautiful car, and you certainly will get an opportunity to visit Mark Pylock's fascinating museum. So it's really a great way to, uh, to spend your money and do a good thing in this community as well. Just think about that. You can go get a piece of pepperoni pizza and drink a beer that's ice cold and stand on a beautiful polished floor and look at these cars and say, gee, my car is only three months old and it's already collects more oil <laughs> underneath it and now those cars don't have any oil underneath them. That's true. But it is, it is. It's a, it's a light point in our conversation, but uh, the point that I want to make before we shut down today is that as a chairman and founder of the organization, I, I greatly appreciate the support of people that have never met us, 
never seen what we do, are not in our same state. But think about this. You who are watching this tape from across the United States, you can always call us and we can help you find some kind of a connection in your city to, uh, to help you find help that you need. Absolutely, Joe. That's a great, that's a great place to wrap it up for today. Anyway, is let me give the helping seniors information line. That number is 321-473-7770, 321-473-7770. So you can call that for information. Uh, you can call that because you uh, may be a senior or know of a senior uh, and we can try to uh, assist in some, some capacity. Uh, you can be from out of state wondering about things and services available to uh, folks and seniors in Florida. And we get a lot of those calls as well. And uh, probably since we're talking about fundraising, Joe, you could also call Kim on that number, Kim Bernard, our education specialist, and say, hey, I'd like to get my helping seniors uh, car raffle tickets, and she'll be happy to help get that set up too. And thank you, Carrie, for, uh, for hosting this little talk, a chat. Um, uh, That's good to have you back, Joe. <laughs> well, I know you have fun, and I know that you like helping people, and it's a, it's a calling that you have. You know, some people, uh, some people don't have a calling to do anything, <laughs> and some people have a calling, and and they're very committed to that. And uh, you are a Christian, and you very strongly believe that you give back to God some of the time that God gives to you on this earth, the same as I do. So let's just keep working together and plodding along here and helping people and trying to beat them out of their money for ticket donations. <laughs> That's right. Get your tickets today. <laughs> so with that, Joe, we'll, we'll call it, we'll call it the evening on this. And then we will look forward to more great stuff coming up on Friday. And don't forget, set the calendar 10 30 AM on uh, Facebook. Uh, Helping Seniors of Brevard or YouTube, uh, Helping Seniors of Brevard, and it's going to be fun. You're going to not want to miss the Dodge versus uh, Chevy challenge on the on the social media. And get your tickets because there's only two and a half weeks left, and you might be having a new car on October 10th. So uh, thanks, Joe. Hope you have a good evening, and thank you, viewer, for joining us. Seniors. I enjoyed it, Carrie. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Bye bye.